In this video I'm going to demonstrate using Postrans to bring in a nominal journal from Excel into Sage 200. The first one I'm going to show you is a nominal journal with a contra line. In other words I can list a whole load of um, lines booked to various nominal codes and the other side of the journal is contraed automatically. Uh, next we're going to move on to a nominal VAT journal. So Postrans can also be used to post stock adjustments, invoices and sales and quotes, purchase orders, manage bill of materials, price lists and all sorts of things. It's also feature rich in that it's got in-sale searching and validation as it imports the data. And of course it's available for Sage Line 250 and in the future Sage 1. Okay, so let's see Postrans in action. So here we are within Excel, we've got our Postrans toolbar enabled and I'm going to press the help button which accesses uh, context sensitive help um, and all the examples included with the system. So I'm just going to type nom in the search bar here and now you can see we can see all our examples of various different types of nominal journal templates we've got that come with the system. So I'm just going to pop uh, double click on Contra and you can see now that's opened and let me just move that to the correct place and what do we got here okay so we've got a header region here so we place some fields on there and here we can see we've got our nominal we're telling post trans that it's a nominal journal we can do reversing journals and various other things um, and we're specifying our contra nominal account there so that's going into our bank current account and that's the description Oh, that's not a, bit of a very good description. Let's type in there 168. I think uh, maybe that needed refreshing there. So you can see post trans has filled in the correct contra description there. If you need any help on this, you can double click here to go to the blog article that explains all about this kind of template. Now, down below, we can see we've got a whole load of nominal journals and we've got the cost centers and departments already filled in. Now that looks as if that could be difficult to fill in, but it's not too difficult because we can do things like we can say space and if I type oil in, we'll find post trans or find all nominal cost center department, department um, combinations with the word oil in the description. And we just select it, fills in the details and we can enter the figures associated. So we're debiting all those nominal accounts and then we're going to credit our contra account which in this case is the bank account of course if we knew the um, nominal code we could type in 1603 for instance then tab away and there are all those nominal codes with various cost center department combinations so hopefully you can see it's very easy to enter the data uh, and of course, this could have all, you could have a formula, uh, sorry, a template that you open, which has all got a load of formulas in to calculate these values based on some um, accounting principle. So how do we import this? Let's just simply go in and press the import button. And now you'll see Postrans has read all the individual lines and it's given me a breakdown of what's going to be posted. So I have the chance here to make sure that the journal is it is correct before I'm posting it in and obviously it has to balance the system would not allow a unbalanced journal to be posted in and now having pressed that we can see it's brought in that in uh, journal so that's journal 44 so if we switch to sage 200 we should be able to see in the deferred waiting postings list um, our transaction let's just refresh the screen to make sure we're at the top and there we can see we've got umpteen lines adding up to 379 pound 23 so that's credited the bank account and debited all the other nominals we specified and the nominals were specified as cost centers and departments so you can see there uh, we're using this combination where you specify the nominal and then slash cost center and then department now, if you wish, uh, it is actually possible also to break it up so you can specify the nominals and the cost center and department in separate rows. So you've got total flexibility there. I would say that this is probably easier to be entering if it was manual, but this might be better if you were using formulas and etc. to apply uh, certain figures to certain nominal codes. So now let's move on to a nominal with VAT. 
So again here you can see we've got another template. We've got exactly the same items entered at the top. It's going to be a contra, but this time we've added some extra tags. And though I haven't explained tags, basically you can rearrange the screen and add columns to your journal by simply going in and selecting from this list here um, to designate a certain column to hold certain figures. Again, as we'd expect, if we type in space and oil, and we have to type in space just to, so Posttrans knows that you want to do a search, we can go down here and select an item. Now you can see there, it's also in, it's also set tax type as input and standard rate, because these are values set on the heading. These are not formulas. Posttrans actually knows that these are headers, uh, Posttrans headers, and it's copying them down so it's going to also calculate the VAT so if I said there was 20 pound to debit there you can see it's added four pound tax onto that line automatically and of course if I change the VAT rate um, if I press space and tab away we can see all our VAT rate so if I zero rated it it's now zeroed it and it's moved back to for if I type a one in there. So you've got the facility there for searching and it's all going on behind the scenes. Post Trans is very intelligent doing all the work for you. Okay, so now let's post this into Sage 200. Let's press the import button and you can see that Post Trans has scanned down there all the lines that make up that nominal journal. And it's shown us um, the breakdown of the journal for confirmation before it's posting in. Of course, you can turn this off in system settings if you wish. So I can again post that. And now we can see on the left hand side, the journal reference has come in. So it's journal 45. So of course, if I now switch back to Sage 50 and I refresh my uh, Sage 50, Sage 200, and I refresh my screen. Let's just refresh that. You can see there, Journal 45 begins here. So there's all our individual lines, and we can see here that's the total plus the VAT content. So that's all been posted into Sage 200. If you're watching this video from YouTube, to go to our website, simply click on the link in the description below. If you're already on our website, you can scroll down slightly and below this video you'll probably see some related links to associated articles. Let's just show you some of the resources on the website. Switch over, here's the home page. You can see here we have a series of menus at the top and if you allow them to expand, you can see there all the different types of importation or extraction you can use with Post Trans and Sage and also the transactions you can post. Importantly, there's a training section here. If we go to the training section, that describes in detail how to alter a post-trans template using the tags that we briefly discussed in the demonstration. Also on the website is a blog which you can subscribe to, and I thoroughly recommend that so then you can learn of new functionality and uses of post-trans. Because each of these articles maybe hones in on a particular function, a particular tag, or a particular way of using the product to do a particular um, job. For instance, expanding bill of materials on an order, code searching, protecting templates, importing CSV files, pricing, managing VAT, order currency, you name it, it's all in there. Uh, and that is easily accessible from the software itself. So if I switch back to a template, and this one's an order template, and I've just got the tag window open here on the right but you'll see as I scroll down this one here um, TL description which is the actual product description actually has a blog article so clicking on there takes me to that blog article and explains in great detail the implications of using that tag and the many different options maybe in system setups alters and behavior of that tag so hopefully that will help also we have uh, the help button itself on the button bar, which takes you to kind of a context sensitive help um, and also takes you to the training page, which explains how to manipulate and alter that template. And in addition to all that, of course, we have these blue help buttons here, which are easily accessible. They're also in the setup windows within Posttrans. So again, that takes you to a blog article. For instance, this one's about making the cursor follow a certain path that will then take you to that article and explain how you customize that individual functionality 
So there I hope you've seen um, many different functions and um, online resources that we provided you to enable you to customize Posttrans to create a template to uh, help you or your customers. So I uh, thank you very much for watching this video.